Right shoulder shift. Hurt. Shoulder. Hurt. Support. Hurt. Shoulder. Somebody <laughs> 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 Half of them guns might themselves. just blow up. <laughs> Fire as fast as you can. Hey, 
Hold on, boy. I do want to join the other two when I'm This is the old. Hey, car. Hey, car. Load and come to the ready. On a fire by foul, which we just did. I hope I can do this. If you fire by foul, one man fired at a time, you intersperse your loaded and unloaded rifles. At any given time, when we fire a volley, all together, a couple of years. Dad, it looks like one's firing a wheel ball. No. Why does it have to Because it's against the law. <laughs> Order arm. I got two men and no fire. I'm sorry? I got two men and no fire. Don't, don't fire. <laughs> We're all born. We've been through that one already. What a good experience. Not <laughs> cold. Shoulder first. Ready. Aim. Fire. Shoulder first. Clear. Shoulder. That was really good. Prime! Are they just shooting at points? They would never fire. They would never fire. They would have Are they firing something? Think about it. Why? Ready! Hey! Fire! Recover her. Yeah. Prime. Yeah. <laughs> this good. Excuse me. making sure their weapon's clear. So you gotta have a percussion cap on these muskets to make them fire. They're not like modern rifles. These, as you saw, the weapon these men are carrying mostly, not all of them, we've got some mixtures of rifles in there, but the, but the bulk of the Confederate infantry, as the war went on, were carrying British infields. And these are like about a 577 caliber, and we imported a lot of those from the south. So the average southern soldier, probably by late war, probably 70, 80 percent of them are carrying infield, and then a mix of European and American, uh, <coughs> or any captured weapons they can get their hands on. This rifle is pretty effective, up to about a thousand yards. Uh, it fires what's called a mini ball. And that's a spherical round piece of lead, which is normally, if this you were firing alive, that mini ball, each guy has a paper cartridge in his cartridge box. Oh, and, and if you're firing a live round, that mini ball will be in that paper. Now, if you went in the Army back in that day, whether it was the Southern Army or the Northern Army, you better have good teeth in the front because that's how you're going to tear that cartridge to load, and that would be something they would look at right away. You've got to have good teeth to rip your cartridge to load that weapon. 
there's at least two opposing teams. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> in, in, um, a little bit about the infantrymen. Confederates, Southerners, Texans. Texas was in the Confederate States of America. We voted as a state to secede and form our own country. So our uniforms are similar to the U.S. Army in certain things. The uniforms at the beginning of the war were pretty, uh, they were pretty wild with them. You can see some of the early photographs of the soldiers. As the war went on, there was a little more regulation. But the difference between the Northern Army and the Southern Army when it came to appearance was the Confederate Army was generally known as a homespun army. They had a lot of stuff. They, <coughs> their wives and their sweethearts would just sew for them and make their uniforms. So unless they were near a big depot and they're all getting issued the same type of uniforms, you'd probably see something like this. If they were near a depot somewhere or getting resupplied, they'd probably get all the same type of uniforms. Every man that's an infantryman, you can always tell a soldier from that time period his branch of service by his weapons and a couple other things, which I'm gonna show you. Number one, an artilleryman is not gonna be carrying a long barrel rifle. That's made to reach downfield and hit a long target. An artilleryman, that, if any of them have arms, they're usually gonna be a sidearm. They might have a carbine, a short rifle, or something like that. But generally, they're not gonna have this rifle. Now, the infantry can come up and support the artillery to give them that support. But each one of the soldiers has got a belt, and on his belt, he's got a bayonet to fix to his rifle for close-in fighting. You can also use it for a stack of arms, and some of you guys use it to stick the hand in Don't do that too often because they get it. This is a cap box. All the men have it. It's on the right side. That's carrying percussion caps, which fits on the end of the rifle, which creates a spark. It fits right here. That's called a nipple. So that percussion cap goes on there. That rifle will not fire without it. We weren't using brass rounds back then. So he's got a, he's got a cap box to, to give fire to the musket. And when he tears that paper, he's dropping the powder down. There's a powder charge already in the paper, and then the ball is on top of that. He has to ram that down to the bottom. When he puts the cap on the nipple, that spark will send a spark down, similar to the cannon, ignite the powder and send the charge out. But you really don't hear, when they pull the trigger, you pretty much just hear it. But that's all happening. Now, he also carries a cartridge box. This is where he keeps his round. It's covered to keep the water off. That's a paper cartridge, so you don't want those getting wet. You get your rounds wet, you're working. On this side over here, this is called a haversack. That's your personal effects, but it's mainly got, you carry your rations in there, your food. Every man's got a canteen. You gotta have water, especially get on a hot day and you're out there in the field marching or fighting. It doesn't take long for you to, you're gonna get really, really thirsty. Uh, most of the men are wearing what we call shell jackets. Early war, you might've seen a lot of these frock coat. This is a frock coat with a long tail. They did wear those too. And the enlisted men, probably the only real difference between this frock coat and an enlisted, they wouldn't have the, the, the trimming for an officer and they would have a single row of buttons on the frock coat. But that's pretty common. They wore those up until the end. Uh, hats, hats were, Army didn't issue hats. They, they issued sometimes a kept the kept, which is, this man is wearing, those might be issued there. But their other hats are mainly just civilian hats. They're just hats they, that they could acquire. Hats in that day were not like hats now. They weren't cowboy hats. The bulk of their hats nearly always have a ribbon around the brim. And if you look at photographs of Confederate leftover hats, you'll see it on all of them. And a lot of them had like a row on them, like this, but they could wear this is kind of a mechanic or Mexican style war type hat. I have a picture of my great president. So, uh, but the, book, the purpose of the hat mainly is functional. You need that hat to keep the sun from your eyes, shade you a little bit, 
and to keep, if it's raining, it gives you a little protection from the rain as well. So you rarely see a man without a hat wearing a hat. Um, I'm trying to think what else. As far as what they ate, if they were near a supply area, they might get some rations issued to them. Uh, and it would be probably something like pork or beans or whatever would they have. Corn? Anything? Oh, I got off the brain. Okay. I was telling you, you could tell the difference between, you know, what different guys carried from different branches because back then we had artillery, infantry, and cavalry. Cavalry are mounted troops. And generally, a cavalryman is not going to be carrying a long barrel rifle. He'll carry a short barrel rifle, which is called a carbine, but he could fire that on a horseback. That's difficult for him. That on the they had a short rifle. They generally would have a sidearm. They might carry two. They also carried a, a sword or a saber. And the cavalry saber is normally always curved. The sword that the infantry and the artillery carry is normally straight. So uh, also the, the trim, if they have any trim on their uniform, they may and they may not. But if they have trim, and I'm talking color, Blue means infantry. Blue still means infantry in the U.S. Army. It's been blue since the Continental Army and the Revolutionary War. Red, if they have a red hat cord, a red stripe, there are stripes on the arm. If they're red, they're artillery. If they're cavalry and they have any trim, it's yellow. they got a yellow stripe on their pants or they're wearing yellow stripes on their arm or collar, that's always cavalry. Um, as far as, uh, I won't tell you a whole lot, uh, I can't, I can't, I can talk to you about the war forever, but I want you to, one thing I want you to know, the Southern Army, which Texas was part of, at maximum strength, during that four year war, the Southern Army, is estimated to have had 650 to 750,000 men in the Confederate Army. All males went to war. All of them. The only way you were going to stay home in a war was you had to be disabled or something really bad wrong with you. If you did not go and fight with your neighbors to defend your homeland, you were considered a coward in your even your local community those guys all went to war they didn't go to war the way people do now we have guys from texas new york pennsylvania that all go into these units and that day if you were a texan you were going to be serving in a texas unit and you were going to be serving in a company of the men from your county so they're your neighbors they all knew each other very well uh, the, the, a lot of the officers and ncos were elected by the local people to lead and if they didn't lead well, they got rid of them pretty soon. You know, you, it was just attrition. You either got out there and lead those men in combat, and if you didn't, then you'd be replaced. The men would replace you. They, wouldn't, they probably wouldn't follow you at all. They wouldn't be taking order from you. Now, having told you that, how many, about how many men served in that army, the Union Army, the Northern Armies, at maximum strength was two to three million men. Well equipped, well armed, well supplied, they outnumbered the South in everything, materialistically, manpower, supplies, food, everything, everything. But that army fought them nearly to a grinding standstill in four years of fighting because most of that fighting, with the exception of the invasion of the Union Force, was on this on our homeland. These guys fight for their when that war is over, think about it. Nowadays, how many men defend our country? How many young boys go off to keep us safe? Of all the young men that are available, how many serve? It's a very, very small percentage. Not with this group. Not in that time. You were going to go to war, and you probably, if you were 16 and up, you were going to be in the Army. At the beginning of the war, they didn't go that low, but as the war ground down and the South began to lose more men, <clears throat> they began to take the much older men 
and young, much younger boys. I've seen photographs of dead Confederates, 14 years old, laying dead in the mud in the trenches. So, you know, once you got in, you were in the fight. And that was it, it was a fight to the finish. Now, I will tell you that the other thing, when that war was over, 250,000 boys from the South did not come home. They're buried all over the South, all over Texas boys, everywhere, defending their homeland. Now, how big of a loss of an army do you think that is? And I told you earlier that army was 650 to 750,000 men, and they lost 250,000. It gives you an idea of how much fighting they were doing and how much dying was going on. The Southern Army lost nearly one in three. That'd be just totally casualties of that in this day and time, unheard of, unheard of. And these guys, these, these armies would, the big armies would get in the field, they would fight all day. They'd get up in the morning and fight all day again, and then sometimes they'd fight a third day. You know, think of that as a soldier like that, standing in a line or in an artillery line, and you've got fire coming on you. Artillery, musket fire, thick as bees, the way they describe it, sound like corn to this, so thick. You think that they were scared? Yeah, they sure were, but most of them stood their ground, and I really admire them for that. Some really tough people, and that's who we came from. I, as a Southerner and a Texan, don't want myself or my family being dishonored by all the death that Texans gave in defense of their homeland and their state. Period. That's how I feel about it. And, that, and we're for, that's what we're here. We're for trans Southern Texas soldiers. And uh, anybody here, before I go, does anybody know what consisted even of the Confederate States? Does anybody know even what those states were? Can you tell me? Virginia, Texas, Massachusetts, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> those are Yankees. Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> that's Alabama, Mississippi. It's kind of following the southern border. You pretty much get it. Is that short? It is. I don't stay with it. <laughs> uh, I'll try to remember it, but the only thing the federal government, they wanted from the federal government from the beginning was the federal government to defend the country. They wanted 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 to defend the country. <laughs> it's heavy though, wasn't it? Heavier than you thought. Really you even heavy. got black powder in your teeth. So that means you really fired it. up. <laughs> yeah, you got brush your teeth. You got your brush brush, right? She was smiling when she shot it. That's what it was. <laughs> Fire in the hole! <laughs> <laughs> 
It's not easy. It's got a hard trigger on it. Which, which is your strongest finger? Are you left handed? You can use two. His gun is shorter because we're dismounted cavalry. So we ride the horse. You got to have a shorter rifle. So. This is our first time up here. We've we're the only ones from our, our unit that's even here. We thought there was going to be more people, but they, they're up at further north in Dallas. So. Oh, okay. And we came out of Houston, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, a good number of people. Yeah. Know. Yeah, there is a lot. Remember what I did? Mm -hmm. You're behind the guy in the green. <laughs> He'd come right up and right in front of him. I'm going now. But he, I, well, some people that just do that. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! There you go. Hurt your ear? Did it hurt your ear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you had to hold your mouth open. I don't think so. I don't think they could either want to hold them up. It's pretty heavy. It weighs about 10 pounds. Seven drop. Loaded. Yeah. Six, six up. Loaded. Four up. Loaded. Gun five up. Gun three up, sir. Loaded. Gun up. Loaded. Seven. Five. Seven. Five.